Hello and welcome to Bay College Video Lectures. This is a continuation of section 1.11. We're multiplying and dividing integers. And we're going to actually look at the order of operations when dealing with integers. Now, in the previous video, we saw some similar to this. And what we have to recall is order of operations applies. We do parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction in a left to right, top to bottom order. So if we look at these, we only have <coughs> the one term here. If we look at this, exponent says it applies to the number it's adjacent to. 3 squared, well, that's 3 times 3, which is 9. When we have parentheses, we have to Notice what's within those parentheses. And we have to say this 2 is the power of everything in these parentheses. So this says negative 3 times negative 3. And if we recall, if we have two negatives multiplied together, it gives us a positive. They have that same sign. Or we can think of it as an even number of negatives, which is a positive. So negative 3 times negative 3 is a positive 9. We got the same result. But what if we have this here? Well, if we look at this, there are no parentheses. So this exponent only applies to this 3. So this says a negative 3 squared. 3 squared is 9, but then we're going to take its opposite, negative 9. So you can see how we got a different result from 3 squared and negative 3 squared. And this negative 3 quantity squared is different than negative 3 squared. So watch for these parentheses and know that this power only applies to what it's adjacent to. It only applied to the negative here because it was within the parentheses. What if we have something like this? OK, we don't have any exponents, but we do have parentheses. There's nothing I can really do within this parentheses because it just contains an integer. So essentially, these parentheses are just serving the purpose to separate our signs. I want the opposite of negative 9, or I can say a negative negative 9. We can think of this as multiplication as well. <clears throat> if I'm multiplying through adjacencies of two negatives, these two negatives make a positive, an even number of negatives here. So the opposite of negative 9 is a positive 9. Now, if we recall absolute values, absolute values say, how far from 0 is this value? Well, negative 9 is 9 units from 0, or 9 tick marks on our number line. So it's 9 units away. I want the opposite of that. Well, the opposite of 9 is negative 9. So you can see how these grouping symbols are very different. This is a special grouping symbol that asks us for the distance. And distances are always positive, so the opposite of the absolute value of negative 9 is negative 9. Now let's see something that's a little bit more complex, <clears throat> because we're going to add more operations. And that's why we have to stick to order of operations. It's the foundation of everything we do in math. If we look at this, and I'm going to break it down, we have negative 2 to the fourth power times 2. If we use rules of operations, it says deal with the exponent first. Well, this is only adjacent to the 2. There are no parentheses. So this is 2 to the fourth. So I have negative 2 to the fourth, which is 16, then times 2. Because we had to do this exponent and not the negative or that 2 before we do anything else. So now I can say, OK, I can multiply. If I see here, I have two numbers, a negative 16 times 2. Well, there's only one negative, so it's negative. 16 times 2 is 32. We get negative 32. Here, if we follow order of operations, we have the integer of negative 12 plus 6 divided by 3. Order of operations say we do any multiplication or division before we do any addition. So we do this division first. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So I'm going to write it right here. And I can leave that in parentheses or not. I could remove the parentheses. It won't change it. And now I have the integer of negative 12 plus the integer of 2. Well, they have opposite signs, different signs. Now it's just addition, so we use those rules. Different signs, I'm going to find their difference. The difference of 12 and 2 is 10. I assess the larger value's negative, so it makes my answer negative. Negative 12 plus 2 is negative 10. Now we're going to look at this example. <clears throat> Here we have that grouping symbol, that special grouping symbol of absolute values. 
Well, we can work within those symbols. It's a grouping symbol, work within parentheses first. Well, this is a special parenthesis. It's that absolute value. Negative 4 plus 2. Different signs. I'm going to find their difference. The difference of 4 and 2 is 2, but the larger value is negative. So then I just carry that grouping symbol down after I've simplified what's inside of it. Now, this is the absolute value. It's still a grouping symbol. It's still here. I can simplify this. The absolute value of negative 2, how far is it from 0? It is 2 units away because it's a distance. It's positive. And now we're done with our grouping symbols. We can move on to exponents. I have to evaluate this. 2 squared is 4. So I have 2 times. 2 squared, I evaluated that to be 4. And now that the exponent's been evaluated, I can now multiply. 2 times 4 is 8. They had the same sign, so it's not going to change. We get a positive 8. All right, I want you to take this time to pause the video and attempt both of these on your own. So we have 12 minus 2 times the quantity of 3 times 2. Parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction in a left to right order. Here, same thing. We have grouping symbols. Luckily, no exponents. That saves us a step. And then we have multiplication and addition and subtraction. So go ahead, follow order of operations, and attempt both of these. Let's move on to this here. <clears throat> We're asked to evaluate negative x squared if x equals negative 5. One of my favorites, a plug and chug, as I like to call it. We have negative x squared. Now remember, I always put in parentheses if I'm going to substitute a value. If x is negative 5, in place of this x, I put in negative 5. Now it was crucial that I had these parentheses. Because without these parentheses, I'm not going to square it properly. I'm not going to raise it to the power of 2. Or I might see something that changes here. So now we apply order of operations. It says work within the parentheses. OK, it's a negative 5, an integer. I can't simplify that any further. So I move on to exponents. The whole quantity in these parentheses is being squared. That's why it was important to have those. A negative 5 times a negative 5, both values multiplied together, gives me this negative. And negative 5 times negative 5 is a positive. Two negatives give me that positive. 25. And just because I brought that negative along, there it is. There's nothing left to simplify. The integer is negative 25. So hopefully you understand the gist of order of operations. But please know the only way you're going to get proficient with these is practice, practice, practice. Find lots of problems out there and keep working on them until you feel confident and you've minimized those sign errors. Because when it comes to integers, they're going to happen. Thank you for watching.